It is a talk. Infrastructure that goes bump in the night. Yes, let me just do this. Um, it's me. That's me on Twitter. And this is the like stuff that I'm like, going over here. Um, whoop, damn it. Okay. So everyone has stuff that you've built and that you deal with. And you have things that you need to monitor. And you get there by way of growing quickly, or having customers, or having an SLA that you need to keep with, or something like that. And you're always going to have that problem. I'm going to cover some of those. I'm going to cover some of the problems with the problems. Like, how do you make these mistakes? How do you recover from these mistakes? Other common issues that you can find in this, and give you some pointers that'll help. So you built a product. Cool. I'm guessing we have a lot of people here working on product teams. Show of hands, maybe? Cool. Sizable count. You probably care. And I quite like this quote that I found on Wikipedia. The argument that systems monitoring is just a nice to have and not really necessary for readiness, for your operational exercises, very quickly dissipates when the product goes down. People start shouting if things break. That's where you can find it. How do you care? I cannot remember this, so I just need to read the whole thing. Condition monitoring, a parameter of monitoring in machinery. So this is specifically for industrial control, but that identifies a significant change in your system. Web server goes down, higher throughput on your LAN, more hits to your web service, something like that visible there. Now, we're also not the first to have these problems. And I mean, you can see these words. They're deep. There's a lot of research into this. So I cut that sentence down a little bit to practice uses sensors to measure the performance of the device being controlled. And those measurements can be used to give feedback. Important part to consider about. One of the very first things that people do wrong here is they just collect and react. No necessary feedback. So your web server goes down, you get paged. Why do you get paged instead of something trying to heal your service? Something like that is what I'll be covering shortly. And how does it help us to know about these things in control theory and industrial engineering? Gives us some references of knowing that people have done this stuff before, some words to refer to, some ideas to think about. and. No, that it's not fruitless to investigate this and go further into the space. We're not without hope. So with those taken into account, I'm going to step this down a notch to more the run of the mill type stuff that we actually deal with. Who of you here have suffered alert fatigue? That's a very large percentage of the crowd. Who of you here have suffered to get the data you need when you had a problem? OK. Plenty of data. But the wrong data? <laughs> cool. Some more problems we've had. You've got data. You've got plenty of it. You don't have too much of it. But you can't see what you need to see in it. More. Fixed thresholds. You had a 100 megabit LAN interface on a server. Now you've got a gigabit LAN interface. But you still get an alert for 100 meg interface. Or you could only service 30 requests. Now you can do 100, but you still get an alert for 28 requests is hitting your server. Who's had that? Cool. So we've had that. And behavior changes. Your site grows. You get more people. You start seeing faster or slower speeds on your disk. Things are too full. File selects are taking too long. Your CDN's too slow. Whatever. We've all seen all of these kind of things. Now. Give me a second to just quickly click on this link, because it's an amazing GIF, and you must know about this. Specifically, even put it in its own window. Um, if you haven't seen this, it's on a site called TireFire. So it's tirefi.re. It's an amazing GIF, and I would recommend using it in various places. We've all had infrastructure that looks like that. I'm fairly certain. Like, We've all had that problem. We've all also had infrastructure that does this kind of thing, where you poke in one place and something else happens. Like, 
you, you're running a small application restart and suddenly your database crashes. Why? Like, oh, because your setup logic is insane and now you're reconnecting six gazillion times. We've had stuff where it's kind of like it's working and it's a bit rough. It looks insane from the outside. You're kind of like holding on though. We've, we've had that problem, I believe. And we've had some other infrastructure, which is very weird, but it kind of works. It's kind of OK. We, like, it, it's OK. It works. It stays. We've had that. Yes? No? So hang on. I believe I need to reload that page. There we go. We also had this, where it's so bad you just can't care anymore. Like, you, you just walk away. Like, what are you going to do? Let it burn itself out, let it explode, whatever. You, but you don't want to do that. If, I mean, it's your product. You care. So ways to get better in this. Ever heard of the USE method? Ha show of hands. Wow. OK, Brendan Gregg had a very good post about this. I'll be dropping links and stuff in this presentation later. I will refresh the very first slide. This is available online. Very good thing to actually know about in terms of going over things. Have you seen the My Philosophy on Alerting doc out of the Google SRE department? Yes, yes. OK. Um, SRE itself, who's here have heard of it? OK, more. And we can look to others. More ways, so application performance monitoring, hands. OK, well, I'm going to have to cover a lot more quickly than I thought. Tooling and review. Does the review part make sense? So thresholds. You could do 30 requests a second at one point or something. Or you, you always only served up PHP, and now you're serving up Python, and you've got different startup times to your site. Review your monitoring. Review what you do with the stuff. Don't just configure it once and keep going. Your tooling matters. If you have Zabbix, you're going to be OK for a while, but you're going to start running into issues with all of it. The, 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 the high frequency data points in Zabbix just will destroy your monitoring. You run the month monitoring, oops, there goes your infrastructure. Um, I need to get back to. This, uh, that one. So at your insight, what do you need when you find a problem your server falls over? You need to know where it failed. Who, like, uh, quickly, where, where common places you look. You need to know where it failed. You need to know what failed. You need to know why it failed. Now, show of hands, who here has log collection systems? OK, that's better. Who here has full systems and application metrics? Why is that side no hands? OK, so application metrics, system metrics, database queries, database dumps, run lengths. OK. All right, so you build your product. You start setting it up, and you get to the point where you're serving stuff, you're making money and you run out of disk space. Ways you can go about this, you can have a new DB server spun up. You can have a, another replica. You can quickly delete some log files. How do you deal with that sustainably? You can start getting some things to start healing this for you. Sensu, for instance, has a thing called auto-healing, where it will try to do certain steps first that you can configure in your system and say, hey, go check here if you can do deleting the logs first, or check if you can clear out some backups first. Then if that fails, escalate to me, contact me. Don't alert me the moment that the threshold covers. And being able to see that in your data and in your metrics of your systems is a very good thing. If you don't have that, start building that. It's very cheap for you to build. It's very easy for you to start building that. The fixed thresholds, I've briefly hinted at. A lot of monitoring tools 
get you to this point and they start breaking for you in the long term. Where you start having the database performances is a very good thing. You can easily move from SSD or spinning rust to SSDs. Now your database performance goes through the roof. But you forget about changing those thresholds and they still sit at, call it 85% as our warning mark. 85% behavior on an SSD is very different to 85% on a spinning Rust disk because you had very different weight performance characteristics on a spinning Rust disk. So maybe a better threshold there is 92% or you go to something that indicates behavior change. You start seeing we are waiting too long for our DB. We are waiting 20 to 30 percent longer in the last five minutes or the last hour, and we're gradually trending up. Start looking towards those kind of behaviors in your system, because you have lots of weird things that happen on your system on occasions. Uh, you've got DB cleanups happening every night. I found out the other day that I should have known about, Debian's MD RAID configuration rebuilds once a week. Like, it rechecks your array status, health, everything. I've run MD RAID in production for about eight years and I only found this out two months ago. It, if I had a bad disk in that set, it would have taken my server down. Know what your tools do. Go look into them. I, I should have known this and I, I just did it. The PHP session data, who have you run PHP? Fair amount here in South Africa, I believe. All right. How do you deal with your sessions? Do you have a better cleanup method? Okay. So, uh, <laughs> so if for those who didn't hear, the answer was meh. Um, one of the ways in which I had a site go down on me once was we got hit by a lot of short-lived sessions. The cleanup job failed because the default cleanup was running a find and then an RM and it just took too damn long to clean up and we filled up the disk with temporary sessions that we couldn't clean up in time. And you, you just don't want to do that. So how do I find out what happens there? Go inspect your cron tabs. And there are two types of cron tabs. There are user cron tabs and there's a cron tab daemon itself. So etc cron.d, cron tab dash l, some stuff stored in spool cron. This doesn't fall away in container space. You still have some of those things there. You might still be launching new daemons. You might still be failing some new daemons. Be aware of how that runs. Uh, who here still runs physical infrastructure or something like it? Okay, so fair amount. You've heard of Chaos Monkey, I believe? Do the same thing with your physical infrastructure. Yank out the power supply. See what happens. Yank out a hard drive out of your server. See how it reacts. Go intentionally break your systems to see what you can do to them and then see how you can start responding to them. Because you don't want to do that at 3 a.m. when you've got no backup. On that topic, your backup plans. Who here has a fixed escalation procedure for faults? Okay, three people. Who's your backup in your team? Like for normal work. Who would you send a pull request to? You have that person. Get that escalation procedure in place. Know who you can refer to for a fault. Know who, standby just happened. Know who you can ask and have your team have that structure. Have that as a document that people get sent out yearly, monthly, any kind of process that makes sense so that they have that information have a backup to that backup. Have clearly delineated responsibilities for your teams. Who here does all of the things? Like, no, like, show of hands. You've, you're the database, you're the accidental DBA, you're the prod engineer, you're the... Yeah, so we, we all have these kind of problems. And do you have backup? Okay, backup, 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 backup. So start cultivating the skills, start saying, Application devs, would you feel comfortable doing this? How can I help you to do this? How can I start teaching you some of these tools? Where do you go look if you start having these faults? So you want to train people and you want to have that backup. After that backup, you must also be able to tell people what went wrong. Do any of you have statuses, alert boards, 
or other mechanisms to notify people of failures. I'm seeing the same people say yes the whole time. That's a good thing for you. It's a possibly a bad thing for everyone else. Maybe. <laughs> um, there are a couple of very cool things. Uh, Stashboard, there's a status board hosted service there. Some of these things you can host on your own infrastructure, some you can't. Have that kind of status board system out there. Failure happens, whole teams together. Get into a common Slack channel, get into a common IRC channel, get onto the same Skype group chat or something, start talking through the thing and have one person who can actually give those statuses out and say, this is what's going on. This is what's going wrong. This is what we're doing to fix it. Here's what we found. When you've done that, when you can go ahead from that point in time, you find yourself less stressed, more focused to be able to deal with a failure in the rare instance that you actually have to get up for it. Now, another thing, and Jan and I were speaking about this yesterday, is if you have very good, reliable infrastructure, half your DB cluster goes away, your site performance is not affected, leave it. Like, leave, well, leave it until the morning, but don't get woken up. If, if your site is up, your product works, Okay, don't wake up, don't interrupt your sleep to deal with a fault you can deal with in six to eight hours time. So many of us have done this and have been victim to this and we're like, you get this alert, you're like, phone just silent, put it off, go to sleep. And you wake up through an hour late tomorrow morning, you're late for work, you sit in traffic, your whole day's a mess and why? Because of a useless alert. Turn it off. Delete it. Don't even like, eh, delete it. Just nuke it. You don't need it. Know about it. Send it to your email or something, but don't wake up. Just don't. Take a very judicial stance about it and just fix it. It's going to ca cause you maybe 10 minutes of effort and it's going to save you nights and nights and nights of sleep. Who here have had has had that alert? The look at it and it's like, meh. Yeah, just nuke it. Just delete the damn thing. Common ways you can do this stuff. I'm a very tool loose person. I'm not going to say use nodules, use Zabbix, use this, use that. There's a gigantic list of tools out there. There are many, many, many specific approaches to solving these problems, some better, some worse. If your monitoring tool is starting to cause you grief or it's costing you too much effort, throw it out the window. Like, co consider that as a possibility. Now, in that same vein, don't just throw away all your old data. I, I've, I've started seeing a lot of people that only care about the last month or so of metrics. Put that stuff into cold storage somewhere because you do care about past performance. If you start seeing more and more of a specific failure, you want to be able to trace it. You don't just trace it for 30 days, you trace it for six months or a year. Find a way to keep that data in storage somewhere. S3 um, infrequent archiving or something, it's fairly cheap as static data. Glacier maybe if you need longer term storage, maybe you've got a couple of hard drives you can store stuff on, but do that. You want to be able to look to past trends and confirm these kinds of things. Because you can go from that to more like this, to kind of like this, to that in a fairly okay space of time. You can spend about a week to get there. And you're going to be so much better off. Your teams are going to be awake. People are going to be able to do something. And you're going to feel like you want to do this all again. Um, do you, any of you have a specific question of implementation idea that you'd want to ask that you can avoid that? That is a very good question. So remember I mentioned the know what your infrastructure does. Oh, let me repeat the question first. So not saying don't monitor database logs or PHP sessions or something, but in the first place, don't write them to disk. Yeah, wouldn't it make sense to not do that in the first place? Yes, it would, if you know that that's happening. 
So if you haven't ever had the time to start reviewing some of your systems that you're dealing with or some of the stuff you install, you don't know what it does. And there was, a, there was someone here asked a question yesterday, one of the speakers, who knows what's happening on your server? Now, I've done a lot of this and I still don't even know how some of this stuff works. Like I can do, I, I run my IRC client on a server that I can SSH to from any random point. I've SSH'd into it from a dance floor at three in the morning from my Nokia E71. And that has saved me being able to fix a client network. But I still don't know how a lot of the things in the world works. And you have to start inspecting that. You have to get through those details to know what you're doing with them. You all, how many of you run Docker in production? Okay. How many of you run Django, G-Unicorn, Go applications, more static like application servers? Some. How do you deploy those? Ansible, Salt, Chef, Puppet, something like that. How do you break your infrastructure most commonly? Human error? So human error, show of hands. Automation failures? Deadlock failures? Wow, if we're lucky. Or people are uninterested. But spend the time to step back, stop fighting fires for a bit, and see where you can fix them. Because that's going to give you a lot more return than waking up every night for the next three months. Cool. Thank you for listening. And if you want to find these with the clickable links. The link is over there. Cheers.